Hi everyone, my name is Liz I Reed and welcome to another video. So today we're going to look at the new releases for January 2021. Oh my goodness, I can't believe <laughs> we're starting a new year, but I think we're all happy about it. I think I think we're all okay with starting a new year. Um, but it is hard to believe this year. I feel like everyone's saying it's been the longest year ever and also at the same time gone super fast. And I agree. Like it's hard, like this year, craziest year of my life, I think. And I think everyone can agree. We're going to go to new releases and see what's coming out in January. If you've never seen any of these videos before, I take you along with me and we just discover it together. It's just a chill video. We hang out. I hope you don't mind. And we go on Goodreads together and just take a look at the books that are coming out um, specifically for this video, January 2021. That's going to be weird to like say 2021. It just, it's not that hard to say, but you have to get used to it. Um, okay. Now I will tell you, I don't save books anymore on my want to read. Um, sometimes I would add them to my want to read shelf on Goodreads. I don't do that. I save those for books by authors I've read and, um, want to read their other work. I recognize names enough now that if I see a book by an author I know, then I will just buy it. So I don't need... Uh, want to read like that. Anyways, we are on the new releases by authors I have on some bookshelf. So Rachel Hawkins have, has a new book, The Wife Upstairs. I think it is a mystery or like a thriller. Yeah, it's a thriller. Has she written thrillers before? Maybe not. Um, a delicious twist on the gothic classic. Um, the Wife Upstairs pairs Southern charm with atmospheric domestic suspense. Perfect for fans for B.A. Paris and Megan Miranda. Honestly, I think it's a Jane Eyre retelling, but it's a thriller. Yeah, meet Jane. I'm not going to read the rest, but that's interesting. I've never read Jane Eyre. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I will. Kristen Kishore. Oh, yay. I love. <gasps> what? what okay i'm adding that to my one to read what the heck she has a graceling book winter keep what i read her books forever ago oh my goodness okay oh i had no idea the highly anticipated next book in the new york times best-selling award-winning graceling realm series which has sold 1.3 million copies four years after bitter blue left off a new land has been discovered to the east, Torla, and the closest nation to Mon Sea is Winterkeep. Winterkeep is a land of miracles, a domestic republic run by people who like each other, where people speak to telepathic sea creatures, adopt telepathic foxes as pets, and fly across the sky in ships attached to balloons. But when Better Blue's envoys to Winterkeep drown under suspicious circumstances, she and Gideon and her half-sister, Hava, set off to discover the truth, putting both Better Blue's life and Gideon's heart to the test when Better Blue is kidnapped. Gideon believes she has drowned, leaving him and Hava to solve the mystery of what's wrong in Winterkeep. Wow. I, like, I don't know if I know Gideon. Do I, like, it's so long ago since I read Bitter Blue. Like, it's almost like I may need to reread it. I don't really want to. I'm sick of rereading books. Um, if it's the same guy from there, then I think I remember who he is. Okay. Charles Soul. Was he? I just want to look who he is. It's a graphic artist. Did he write? He might have read some, not read, wrote. Okay, so he wrote The Rise of Kylo Ren. And I loved it. So there's a new one, Light of the Jedi. It's a novel. Okay, is this, it's an adult, 200 years before the events of Star Wars. Oh, cool. The Phantom Menace in the era of the glorious High Republic. The noble and wise Jedi Knights must face a frightening threat to themselves, the galaxy, and the force itself. Okay. I loved the rest of Kylo Ren. Another Rachel Hawkins. Holy smokes. 
The Haunting of Beatrix Green. Um, oh, this is... I've seen this. I think it's a short story collection. Beatrix Green has made a name for herself in Victorian England as a re- re- reputable spiritual medium, but she's a fraud. Even she knows ghosts aren't real. But when she offers a lucrative job by James Walker, scientist notorious for discrediting pretenders like her, um, Beatrix takes the risk of a lifetime. A first seance at the infamously haunted Ash- Ashbury Manor fools him. Um, she will finally have true financial freedom. If she fails, her secret will become her public shame. I kind of like that concept. It reminds me. It reminds me of Psych. Um, I like that. That's fun. I want to read this actually. Um, I don't know if I've read Rachel Hawkins before, but um, I must have. Is she the author of? Yeah, I read her Rebel Bell series. I liked that series. I know a lot of people don't, but I really enjoyed it. Um, Ash Parsons and Vicky Alvear Schechter. Schechter? Sorry if I got that wrong. Okay. Um, Jalika Gagwas, Shadow's Legacy. I think it's a a novella. And so, oh, January 1st. So I'm going to have to like buy it on Kindle. It's the prelude to the new trilogy. So I have to read it. Ah, I'm so excited. I don't know if I want to read too much. A new novella sent. Yeah, I don't want to read it. I'm gonna. I'm sorry. I don't want spoilers. Um, Anna Guire. I read her one book. I think. Oh wait, no. Yeah, I read her Enclave, and it was fine. Um, it was perfectly fine. Um, I tried moving on to Outpost, but I didn't. I can bother anymore. Um, Love Code. Let's see what it says. Again, I'm not saying when these come out. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, it's book two in a series, Galactic Love. So let's see what book one. Strange Love. Um, he's awkward. He's adorable. He's alien as hell. Xylar of Kith Black is a four-time loser in the animal choosing. If he fails to find a nest guardian this time, he'll lose his chance to have a mate for all time. Desperation drives him to try a matching service, but due to a freak solar flare and a severely malfunctioning ship AI, things go way off course. This human being is not the Turalian match he was looking for. Is it a alien... <laughs> Is it an alien uh, romance? I kind of like that. It's adult. I'm going to, I think I'm going <laughs> to add it. I keep on saying I'm not going to add anything. Well, maybe I will. That sounds fun. An alien. Um, I'm almost positive. Yeah, it's a romance. It's science fiction romance. I like sci-fi. Why not? Okay. Let's do it. I'll add that one too. So the new one. Oh, geez, what's going on? Get a clue. This is what I'm really excited about. Okay, so I do have some anticipated books that I'm looking forward to. Get a clue. Bookish boyfriends. I'm so hyped for this. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, this is book four in the series. Why is it 3.25? Why is it so low? I'm gonna rate it high right now because I'm so excited. I know you're not supposed to do that, but it needs high ratings. There's only four ratings. And the series is so good. Like, why, why, people? Why are you rating it low? Why are you giving it two stars, Lexi? Anyway, sorry. So this is book four in the series. Each book is a standalone, but I do recommend reading them in order because um, the couples will be spoiled. If you don't care about that, then it doesn't quite matter. But um, this is between Huck and Winston. And I'm trying to remember. One of them was like best friends with um, the heroine in book two. And then the other one was brothers with the hero of the third book. So it's I like, I like series like that where characters um, are used later on for their own romance. Um, and it's a Sherlock Holmes retelling. So it says the game's afoot in the next book of the Bookish Boyfriends series, this time starring Huck and Winston. After Miss Gregory assigns the works of Sherlock Holmes in English class, a mystery deepens and 
Reginald, our hero high, Huck, and Wynn, Curtis, young... Oh, I hate when the typo... Okay. Huck and Wynn, Curtis's younger brother, team up to solve the case. And while the sleuths gather clues, another soon worthy romance blooms in the school halls. Perfect for young readers. Like, I'm almost positive it's um, LGBTQ+. Like, I can't imagine it not being. It doesn't say, but I'm assuming. It's funny because um, one of them, the friend... Yeah, Huck. Huck was the friend. He was, like, fake dating with one of the girls. So, um, it's cute that, like, oh, no, he, like, didn't like her because he clearly probably um, isn't attracted to women. So, okay, Rachel Hawk. I think I know who she is. Yeah, I read her. I read a few books of hers. Um, I read her Once Upon sorry, the Royal Weddings series. These are Christian fiction. I don't normally read, like I, I've read Christian fiction before, but I haven't read a lot. And so I read her trilogy, which is following either a prince or a princess falling in love in, you know, traditional, (laughs) um, royalty style. And then I read the Wedding Chapel and I liked that one. I didn't like it as much. Yeah, I gave it four stars. I read these forever ago. Forever ago. I guess my favorite was Once Upon a Prince. Um, I gave that five stars. And the other two, I gave four stars. I remember really enjoying them. Um, So I do recommend them if you don't mind Christian fiction. Um, I remember it not being so heavy-handed. And that's usually what I don't like is heavy-handed Christian themes where you feel like they're preaching at you. I don't like that in my fiction. You know, if I want to be preached at, I would go to church, you know, (laughs) so um, I can watch a sermon to be preached at. So anyways, I guess this is a short story collection. Rachel Hawk, Becky Wade, and Katie Genshirt. Say I do. Three wedding stories. So there you go. Um, I'm super excited for a lot of these. Why did this not show up? I need one to read that. Um, and I want to read this. And I don't, I kind of like the idea of reading Light of the Jedi because it's like a new timeline. You don't need to know too much about, I don't, I don't know if I'm quite ready to add that. Anyways, let's look at more releases for January. This may be a long video. But I'm super, I can't believe Chris and Kishore. Oh my goodness. I hate you give novel. So point zero, Concrete Rose. Oh, look at that cover. Okay, so Angie Thomas revisits um, Garden Heights 17 years before the events of The Hate You Give. That's so interesting. In this searing and potent exploration of black boyhood and manhood. If there's one thing 17-year-old Maverick knows, it's that a real man takes care of his family. As a son of a former gang legend, Maeve does that. The only way he knows how, dealing for the king lords. With this money, he can help his mom who works two jobs while his dad's in prison. Sounds hard-hitting. So, A Vow So Bold in Deadly Book 3. Okay, I didn't know there was going to be a third book. I have book one, haven't read it yet. I don't want to read the synopsis. Sorry if you're excited for that, but I don't want to be spoiled. Lore by Alexandra Bracken. Cool. Um, I haven't read any of her books. I can never remember what she's written before. Like, I've heard the name before. She has written The Darkest Minds. Okay. I feel like, yeah, The Passengers, Brightly Woven. Okay. So I have, I've never read her books before. Um, so a sweeping, ambitious, high octane tale of power, destiny, love, and redemption. Every seven years, the Aegon begins. As punishment for a past rebellion, nine Greek gods are forced to walk the earth as mortals hunted by the dis- descendants of ancient bloodlines all eager to kill a god and seize their divine power and immortality long ago lore perseus fled that brutal world in the wake 
of her family's sadistic murder of a rival line, turning her back on the Hunt's promises of eternal glory. For years, she's pushed away any thought of revenge against the man, now a god, responsible for their deaths. Yet, as the next hunt dawns over New York City, two participants seek out her help. Castor, a childhood friend of Lore, believed long dead, and a gravely wounded Athena among the last of the original gods. Oh my goodness. This sounds amazing. <laughs> Do I dare add it? I don't know. Oh, Emma Lord. Oh, that's the same author as Tweet Cute. I haven't read that. Um, you Have Match by Emma Lord. When Abby signs up for a DNA service, it's mainly to give her friend and secret love interest Leo a nudge. After all, she knows who she is already. Avid phot photographer. Injury prone tree climber, best friend to Leo and Connie. Although ever since the BEI big embarrassing incident with Leo, things have been awkward on that foot. But she didn't know she's a younger sister. When the DNA service reveals Abby as a secret sister, shimmery haired Instagram star Savannah Tully is hard to believe they're from the same planet. Never mind the same parents, especially considering Savannah, queen of green smoothies, is only a year and a half older than Abby herself. The logical course of action, meet up at summer camp and figure out why Abby's parents gave Savvy up for adoption. That sounds good. I like that. The only good Indians. See, I thought this was coming out already, but I, like, I thought this came out already, but I guess not. Um, by Stephen Graham Jones. I probably would never read this because I get scared really like i don't read horror um but everyone's talking about it so it's coming out in january if you're interested january 26 and this latest novel from steven comes a heartbreaking heartbreakingly beautiful story of revenge cultural identity and the cost of breaking from tradition Ooh, a new series crown of bones um by a.k wilder for fans of epic fantasies and sweeping adventures, this ensemble cast will immerse you in a world of unique magic, breathtaking action, and, and unforgettable characters. Excuse me. In a world on the brink of the great dying, no amount of training can prepare us for what is to come. A young heir will rise the most powerful phantom in all of Basine. A dangerous high savant will do anything to control the realms. A mysterious and deadly Amar race will steal children into the sea, and a handsome guide will f with far too many secrets will make me fall in love. My name is Ash, a lowly scribe meant to observe and record, and yet I think I'm destined to change us all. That sounds good. Um, Let's see. Okay, so Melissa Albert has another book out with the hazelwood tales from the hinterland hinterland a gorgeously illustrated collection of 12 fairy tales by the author i guess part of that world that sounds good um across the green grass fields a wayward child's book i haven't read this series but i'm sure everyone's going to be excited about this a young girl discovers a portal to a land filled with centaurs and unicorns um in the standalone tale there you go sounds good i've heard of this shipped angie hawkman i heard it was really good um between whoops sorry between taking night classes for her mba and her demanding day job at a cruise line marketing manager henley evans barely has time for herself let alone family friends or dating but when she's shortlisted for the promotion of her dreams all her sacrifices finally seem worth it the only problem graham crawford collins the remote social media manager and the bane of her existence is also up for the promo for the position although they've never met in person their epic email battles are the stuff of office legends that sounds so fun i feel like i heard this compared like it's like a cross between the unhoneymooners un and um the hating game which sounds amazing this looks interesting. One of the good ones by Meka Moolite. Moolite? The Hate You Give meets Get Out in this honest and powerful exploration of prejudice in the stunning novel from sister writer duo. Oh, sorry. Their names look so similar. So it's Meka and Maritza. My mistake. Um, wow. They're the same authors of Dear Haiti and dear haiti love elaine um wow 
I like that cover. It's beautiful. Okay, so Siri, Who Am I? by Sam. Um, sh- sh- I can't say that. Anyways, and Siri, Who Am I? So Mia might look like a millennial, but she was born yesterday, emerging from a coma with a short-term amnesia after an accident. Mia can't remember her own name until the Siri assistant on her iPhone provides it. Based on her cool hairstyle, dress, and signature um, lipstick, she senses she's wealthy, but the only way to know for sure is to retrace her steps when she leaves the hospital. Using Instagram and Uber, she arrives at the pink duplex she calls home in post, but finds Max, a cute off-duty postdoc, supplementing his income with a house-sitting gig. He tells her the house belongs to JP, a billionaire with a chocolate empire, a few texts later, JP confirms her wildest dreams. They're in love. Mia's living the good life, and he'll be back that weekend. Oh, and then I think it's between her and Max. Interesting. That's an interesting concept. The X talk. What's this? Rachel Lynn Solomon. Um, public radio co-hosts navigate mixed signals in Rachel Lynn Solomon's sparkling romantic comedy. Shay Goldstein has been a producer at her Seattle public radio station for nearly a decade, and she can't imagine working anywhere else. But lately, it's been a constant clash between her and her newest colleague, Dominic Young, who's fresh off journalism master's program and convinced he knows everything about public radio. Fine. Ooh. Confessions of a Curious Bookseller by Elizabeth Green. Without question, Fawn Fawn knows that her used bookstore is the heart of West Philadelphia, a cornerstone of culture for a community that for the past 20 years has found the quirkiest absolute charming. When a young indie bookseller invades her block, Fawn is convinced that his cushy couches, impressive selection, coffee bar, and knowledgeable staff are a neighborhood blight. Misguided yet blindly resilient, Fawn readies for battle. But as she wages her war, Fawn is forced to reflect on a few unavoidable truths. The tribulations of online dating, a strained relationship with her family, and a devoted, if not always, law-abiding intern. Not to mention what to do about a pen pal with whom she hasn't been entirely honest and the repairs of her aging store requires. Assuming it's romance. Sounds kind of like you've got mail a little bit that sounds fun um the frozen crown by greta kelly this looks like a fantasy young young adult one a princess with a powerful and dangerous secret must find a way to save her country from ruthless invaders in this exciting debut fantasy the first novel in a thrilling duology packed with heroism treachery magic and war gotta love a good Y fantasy Oh, this is book two, Hopeless Romantic, When in Rome, book two. It's a woman's fiction, romance fiction, set against the breezy backdrop of coastal Rhode Island, the latest novel from bestselling author, um, asks whether two of a small town's biggest hearts can learn to put themselves first in the name of love. As As caregiver for her autistic brother, Beckett knows how meaningful a little extra help can be when life happens, which is why she runs Consider It Done, a personal concierge service in her small town. Her job also gives her the flexibility to follow her passion, being Rome, Rhode Island's unofficial special needs advocate, training emotional support companions in her spare time. There's not much of that, though, and certainly not enough for serious dating. It's always been family first for Beck, but one un unquestionably gorgeous good-natured man is suddenly a temptation that's getting tougher to resist that sounds awesome another this looks like another fantasy um cast in firelight it is wickery series by dan swift the first book in an epic heart-pounding fantasy duology about two royal heirs betrothed to be married but whose loyalties are torn and a ruthless enemy who threatens their world. But for fans of Sabah Tahir and Renee Hattier. Awesome. The Invitation. It's a lot of books here. Um, by Vi Keeland, A New Sexy Standalone by the author. 
Um, the first time I met Hudson was at a wedding. I had received an unexpected invitation to one of the swankiest venues in the city. Handsome Hudson was a groomsman and quickly, quite possibly the most gorgeous man I'd ever laid eyes on. He asked me to dance and our chemistry was off the charts. Sounds good. I never read that author before. Oh, there's a third one in this series. Enjoy the View by Sarah, Sarah Mor Morgan Thal Thaler. Morgan Thaler. This is part of an Alaska series, Moose Springs, Alaska. A grouchy mountaineer, a Hollywood starlet, and miles of untamed wilderness. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, that sounds awesome. I love it. Happily Ever Afters. I just love these illustrated covers. They're so cute. Elias um, Bryant. Jane the Virgin meets to all the boys I've loved before in this charming debut filled with black girl magic. Perfect for fans of Mary H.K. Chow and Nicola Yoon with crossover appeal for readers of Jasmine Guillory and Talia Hibbert. It's young adult contemporary romance. 16-year-old Tessa has never felt like the protagonist in her own life. She's really rarely seen herself reflected in the pages of the romance novel she loves. The only place she's a true leading lady is in her own writing, and the swoony love story she shares only with Caroline, her best friend. When Tessa is accepted into the creative writing program of a prestigious art school, she's excited to finally let her story shine. But when she goes to her first workshop, the words are just gone. Fortunately, Caroline has a solution. Tessa just needs to find some inspiration, a real life love story of her own, and she's ready with a list of rom romance novel inspired steps to a happily ever after. Oh, that sounds so adorable. I want to read it. Minus me. I'm always picking on the illustrated covers. I can't help but just pick on it. This is a woman's fiction. Um, her life turned upside down by a grim diagnosis. A small town Maine woman sets about writing a how-to life manual for her handsome yet hapless husband. That sounds so sad. I don't like sad stories. Let's see if there's... I think that might be it. I'm seeing repeats of the same book. And I'm not really seeing anything else that applies to me. So I think I'm going to end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I would love to know if you are excited for any of these books. If you are, please comment down below. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Um, I think it's pretty clear which ones I'm really excited for. <laughs> if you want more bookish content from me, just click on the video on the screen or you can check out my channel to see the other videos I have posted. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you have not done so. You can follow me on Goodreads, Instagram, and Twitter. And you know what? I want you to keep reading. Bye.